but uh, I guess as we look around about us right now, I know that we can all agree right now that now more than ever, uh, the world has lost their path or really they've lost their minds. Um, but I guess every generation uh, can kind of say that they've had at least that one event in their life that they thought, this is it. This is the time that the Lord is coming back. But in the last few years, the, the events just seem to be occurring in greater rate at the moment. Nowadays, it, you know, just there seems to be a large decline in humanity when you look around right now. Humans now more than ever uh, just have this sense of entitlement that no one can tell them what to do. Um, violence seems to be very widely accepted in nowadays. Before it was frowned upon, now it just, if you've got an opinion, if someone doesn't listen to you, go out and hurt them, seems to be the, the practiced uh, mindset at the moment with the world today. Uh, sorry, I just lost my notes. That's why I don't use iPad. I use my Bible. Um, uh, as soon as I find my talk again. But yeah, um, but yeah, the world's going out of their way at the moment, especially to influence the children um, and to have them accept certain corrupt behaviors, right? As we see with Disney and some of the other big organizations or corporations, they, they really want to attack those children right now. But as I do look around um, and see the things taking place, I've also realized that the Lord has been preparing us for this for quite some time. But still, when we look around and we actually see those things taking place um, before our very eyes, you know, the complete corruption of man, the downfall of man, um, you can't help but find yourself in absolute amazement that us as human beings that can be that stupid can pollute ourselves that much that uh, the ways of the Lord can't even be seen in us anymore. But through this, I've, I've, I also know that we've been blessed or how blessed we are, um, that at any moment we can call upon the Lord for that resolution, for a way out of any kind of situation. You know, the, the Lord does take care of his own, his own spirit-filled people. He doesn't forget us and he's never going to let us down. Um, and, you know, and just to, to think about on a daily basis, just how desperate as well uh, people have become around the world, you know, who look at these situations because there are some people out there that can see these things. It troubles them, but they have no answer. That's one thing I've learned through my work. Uh, I've often wondered why they had such an attraction to the drugs and the alcohol, because it seems to be their only topic. But over the last couple of weeks, this has been their conversation. Hey, look at the world. Ah, well, I'm going to go home and get drunk tonight. So they don't have the answers. So that's the way they go. These, these people that don't get involved in all of the violence and all of the craziness, when they look at it and don't see the answers, this is the way they take. Um, but, and every time I've heard that, it just makes me appreciate the position that I'm in or that we're in, that, you know, we have the truth, that we're full of that Holy Ghost and fire. And that I know that I don't have to change a situation. The Lord does. And in some, most situations, he already has changed the situation. We've just got to see it with our own eyes. And I take great uh, uh, peace and comfort in knowing that. But 
to get access to this kind of peace and or this level of peace and comfort, there's a small commitment that we need to do or need to have before we can get to this peace and comfort. Let's head over to Matthew 6.33. Matthew 6, we're going to read at verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. What does that mean exactly? To seek ye first the kingdom of God. Well, it simply means that we first have to obtain the kingdom of God. We have to get the kingdom of God. And how do we obtain the kingdom of God? Let's head over to John 3, 5. The scripture that we base our entire doctrine off, um, other than Acts 2, 38. John 3, 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Holy Ghost, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So John 3, 5, we must be born of the water and of the Holy Ghost. Loving one another as Jesus commanded us, having that faith and trust in the Lord, um, you know, that we walk after him every day and not after the flesh. This is how we obtain that kingdom of God. And we become righteous when we are full of the Holy Ghost. So when we seek, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that is what it's talking about. The first repent, be baptized by full immersion, receive the Holy Ghost, where we are transformed and we become righteous through the Holy Spirit. And it says, all these things shall be added unto you. And what are these things? Salvation, healing, provision, hope, peace, comfort. These are the things that will be added on to us once we receive those holy, the Holy Spirit. Once we enter into God's kingdom, once we obtain the kingdom of God, these things are added on to us. We no longer have to search for these things. We just have to call upon the Lord and he gives us these things. Let's head over to John 14. And I'm going quickly through these now because I know I see the time. John chapter 14. Uh, verse 11, and I'm going to read to verse 16. If you're following along in your Bible. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for thy very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I shall do, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask, anything in my name i will do it if you love me keep my commandments and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter which is the holy spirit that he may abide with you forever now these are the scriptures that that we draw our faith from these are the essence scriptures of our of our doctrine of our walk where we gain our faith from you know that the lord is who he says he is that it is the same god that moses called upon to spread uh, to um to divide the red sea it is the same god that daniel put his faith in that shut the the mouths of the lions and um uh you know letting that 
be a testimony for everyone else who witnessed that. And most importantly, that he loves each and every one of us. You know, everyone in this room and those who are yet to be called, he loves them. And he will come through on his promises that he's promised. You know, which are to give us that eternal life, to heal the sick when they need it, to comfort those who have anxious feelings or are not sure about things. This is the comforter that Jesus speaks of. The Holy Spirit that now dwells in us is what comforts us. That if we draw upon it, it will give us that peace and comfort to know that we don't have to doubt anything, that the Lord has already uh, fixed whatever the issue is. And, uh, you know, it is what Jesus died for so that we could have access to that Holy Spirit. So it could be poured on each and every one of us so we could have that comforter. And those that are maybe yet to receive it. So that we could have access to those promises. All of this has he said he will do when we show this level of commitment, when we show this level of faith and trust in his word and in his promises. But however, we are human. And unfortunately, we have that little guy that sits on our shoulder all the time. The one that tries to feed us doubt, the world, the flesh, whatever that little guy is, he sits on our shoulders and he's trying to deceive us, trying to tell us that Jesus doesn't care about us. But if that was true, then he wouldn't die for us. He wouldn't die so we could have access to the holies of holies so that we could have peace and comfort when we see the world spiraling down the way it is. We can't let the flesh side come out in us. But the, the, the flesh, the world, it is going to push really hard. But we must rebuke it through the Holy Spirit. Jesus has demonstrated Oh, God has demonstrated numerous occasions, you know, not just in the scriptures when we, we read in the, in the, in the scriptures. He, he, did, he hasn't just delivered those heroes in the Bible. If we really stopped and looked in our own lives, you would realize that he has delivered us as well. If we stopped and meditated every day, once we got up, before we went to work, and meditated on those things, it would become very obvious to us that the Lord has always been there to bring us through things. That when he said he'd bring the comforter, that yes, he delivered on that promise. But sometimes we can feel down and out. And sometimes we just, sometimes we can't imagine going to that fellowship, right? Or that meeting is whatever's happening in the world, the anxieties or whatever just seems to, to bring us down. But we have to make that sacrifice. We have to go to the meeting anyway. Um, yeah. We have to make that sacrifice because the Lord is going to bless us. He's not going to leave us hanging. It's happened to me many, many occasions, and I'm sure other people have this. But I've thought sometimes just my work or whatever, studies, I just felt overwhelmed and I just couldn't be bothered going to the meeting. But I knew if, if I made that, that sacrifice, that commitment, and said, get behind me, Satan, and went to the meeting anyway, I knew that the Lord was going to be there for me. And how many times have you gone to the meeting feeling that way? And as soon as the choruses started, you felt that joy and peace come to you. It happens every time. The Lord said he would send the, a comforter. And he came through on that promise. So when we are out there on a daily basis, doing our chores or whatever it is, or, you know, we're just at home and we're going through a tribulation, some kind of adversity. Remember that the Lord 
is there for us always. He promised it. Just sometimes we, we have to wait just a small time to see that blessing of the Lord. But in the grand scheme of, of the Lord, that is a small price to pay for his ultimate goal and what he's going to reveal in us when he comes back. It's not really burdensome. But the Lord is going to answer us and he is going to comfort us because he promised us. This is, this is what the world can have as well. So when we see those things happening out there in the world, it's hard to watch sometimes, just the foolishness of men. But there are those out there that are confused by it. They just don't know what to do. But God offers peace and comfort. He offers victory. We know how to get it. We know how to obtain it. We can't keep it to ourselves. We have to be out there telling them that they don't have to fear or turn to the alcohol to, to numb the pain or whatever. But that's it. That's the whole mission of us being a Christian. As being the witnesses of Jesus Christ. We, I mean, we witnessed it. How can we tell others of Jesus if we don't go out there and open our, mind, our mouths and tell them this is, this is what we witness. This is what the Lord does. All these things happen in, happening in the world are temporary and they're going to come to an end. You don't have to fear it. So that's my encouragement. It's craziness out there. But the Lord is coming back. There is a way out of it. We've all obtained it, but there are others out there that haven't yet and would love, would love to hear this word, would love to hear the good news. So that's my encouragement. Amen.